Let's begin again. Uh, my name is Charles O. Young, and I'm a pediatrician at Kaiser Permanente. I am a husband, as well as a father of two children. And uh, it's just my pleasure and honor to be here to speak to you all today. When I was actually looking through the deck, my kids asked me, Daddy, was that you when you were a little kid? <laughs> <laughs> well, even though I was born in Boston, and I do like to eat apples, I said, this cute little kid, unfortunately, is not daddy. Sorry, kids. <laughs> well, the United States is in the midst of a public health crisis fueled by an epidemic of obesity. The notion that obesity is purely uh, an issue of personal responsibility is both prevalent and inaccurate. It's actually a myriad of different factors. And it goes uh, from the environments that our food and our beverage and our socioeconomic environments bring that where we live, work, and play that really actually matters so much in helping with our overall health and our waistlines. So just as we begin to fight our own personal um, weight battles, we also must work together to create and invest in a healthier community setting. We must make it easier for people to eat healthy and move more as part of their daily lives. Oops. Um, before I go on, I actually have a lot of congratulations. You know, we have had so much local success. From the Santa Clara County Board of Supervisors toy ban on fast food kids meals, this is the first in the country, this is huge, to the healthy eating and active living changes in schools where sodas are no more allowed on school campuses. Woohoo! Yeah, that's huge. To the County of Santa Clara Nutrition Standards, which is really, um, it, it has an effect on county meetings and events, vending and cafeterias, to the whole Rethink Your Drink campaign, which has had so many different partners. There have been, there's been so much invested in this, and there's been success. And it's a great start, but we must keep that conversation moving. The future of our children depends on it, and Kaiser is committed to helping to change this epidemic. So let's talk a little bit about um, where we are with the obesity ep epidemic. Just to give you a snapshot, you know, there are 97 million Americans that are considered obese. And uh, in the country, this shocking, one third of adults are obese and one third of adults are overweight. So there's approximately 66 to 69 percent of American adults that have a BMI, a body mass index, over the 85th percentile. That's huge. And then obesity is the second leading cause of preventable deaths in our country. Now, I want you to take a step back. Imagine if you have a loved one that's standing in the middle of a train pass, and you know that this is a preventable death. Wouldn't you do everything you could to really move them? And, you know, this is one of those areas of preventable deaths. It's a major risk factor for type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, um, stroke, and certain forms of cancers. I remember when I was a kid, type 2 diabetes was always called adult onset diabetes because you only see it really in adults. Now we're seeing it in our nine-year-olds. This is a problem. Um, and the cost to our nation is, is projected to be about $147 billion in direct health care costs alone. So, you know, we are getting busier and busier. As we get busier, we have less time to prepare healthy foods. And we go out and eat more, and usually it's more of these processed foods that are just adding a lot more calories. So, with the, back in the 70s, it was 34%, and now we're cleaning close to 50% of every food dollar outside the home. And, you know, with the, as we um, go out more and as our food environments change, there's more of an abundance of unhealthy choices for us everywhere. And, you know, the meat and the dairy and the fruit and vegetable offerings, well, those have remained about the same in the last 30 years. It's really the processed foods and the cereals and the sweetened beverages choices, these have all increased significantly. And thus, you see that increase in the caloric uh, intake take per person. And basically the outsides of the supermarket have remained the same, while the middle with all the unhealthy choices is growing and growing and growing. Uh, serving sizes has tripled in the last few decades, and we see that PE is on the decline in the schools. 
So what if we do nothing at all? Well, on this, in this landmark paper from the New England Journal of Medicine, it's actually just quite shocking that this may be the first generation in the modern era where the kids will not outlive the parents. Despite all the gene therapy and robotic surgery and all these medical advances, our kids may not outlive this generation of adults. So Kaiser is just really involved in changing the trajectory. And we believe this is a multifaceted approach. I mean, in the exam room, I am going to actually go ahead and do BMI screening. I'm going to do counseling. I'm going to give them physician materials. And for those kids that need help, I'm going to put them into weight management interventions. We're going to do counseling. I have group, group programs there. It's so neat. Um, we have a health educator and a physical therapist and a nutritionist. We call them the terrific triad. And they really work with motivational interviewing to help families and kids really kind of change that trajectory. And then we also really depending on our community partners to make environmental changes. The, you know, our kids are in the schools, there's different community programs, there's legislature and partnerships. All these are involved together to help change this trajectory. So I want to go through a little bit of what Kaiser does for some of our members, what we're doing with our workforce, what we're doing in our communities, and also around the nation. So with our commitment to our patients, one in three people at, who are insured in Santa Clara County is a member of Kaiser. We actually care for a lot of people. And over the last decade, obesity has drastically changed how we practice medicine. So one of the things that we do, well, you know better than yet, why don't I bring you to the exam room with me? Let's go visit our first patient, Diego. He's a nine-year-old. He comes here from leg city today. And, you know, with all of our patients, they have online access to My Doctor Online, and it's a series of resources for them to look into how they can actually start working on a healthy weight. It, we call it continuous care, where they can access it any time of the day or night, and not just episodic care in our exam rooms. So, as I go in to see Diego, you know, I have his registration receipt, and I see that, oh, he hasn't had his DMI check for over a year. We need to go ahead and do that. And so this is a cue to remind me that, oh, I need to especially include that as part of my exam. So as I see that, basically I have my computer and my nurse has already clicked my BMI button, which also pulls up his BMI and, and gets things ready for me to counsel him a little bit. As we're talking there, he actually has this little can of Coke, and after we finished talking about his leg pain, and I said, actually, you know, on this little trip, did you know there are 10 spoons of sugar in every one can of Coke? Yeah. And because I know that Diego is actually uh, really into cooking, and his family also likes to take nature walks, I have a little binder where I can just pull out resources right there. Um, if they were here for a well-child visit, we actually would have a screening form that helps us to really get insight into their screen time and physical activity and so forth. And we have tools uh, online on our computer to help us to order labs and also to print out different sheets for the family. And at each of our BMI screening, which is any kid that needs the screening done, we are required to do the counseling that it takes to help them with the nutrition and the exercise and the screen time. Over at Kaiser, actually, um, I created a BMI button because um, this button helps us with the process so much. When I, that button is pressed on the computer, basically a whole chain of events happens. We have growth charts that come up. We have diagnoses coded in. We have information that's useful for our after-visit summaries. And then we also have things that actually are charted in our chart. And this basically limits our time typing on the computer and gives us more time to doing the face-to-face -face interaction with our patients. Um, we have also started to include exercise as a vital sign. So instead of just a heart rate, blood pressure, temperature, and respiratory rate, we use exercise as the fifth vital sign to get insight into how kids are doing. And I love our binder because there's just a myriad of different things. Cooking classes, nature prescriptions, um, the different organizations and uh, different weight management programs we have that we can send them to. Um, now, we believe also at Kaiser that it's not just taking care of our patients, we also have to take care of ourselves. And we actually have 10,000 physicians and staff employees over at, uh, just in Santa Clara County. 
And it's our job to also help them to maintain a healthy life. So, you know, we believe that actually the healthy life, as we model it, will kind of trickle down into our members and our patients and our customers. And so Kaiser kicked off a big Live Well, Be Well campaign. And it, Live Well, Be Well is about total health. Not just healthy eating and active living, but your emotional health and wellness. And, you know, really creating a healthy workplace so that hopefully we can also have a healthier community. Um, in our facilities, we have also um, just so many things that make it easy um, to be healthy. We have these farmers markets every week. I love going out on Thursday at lunchtime, getting my organic produce from the local farmers. Um, we have different vending machines that provide mainly healthy options. There's a lot more fruit and granola bars and, and water. And then we have uh, just walking paths. And I love the uh, little gardens that we have right on campus. These are square foot gardens where actually employees can go ahead and uh, get a little bit of extra sunshine and vitamin D as they're going out to plant things. And the employees love it. They, they do that during their lunch and break time sometimes. Um, so we talked a little bit about our members. We talked a little bit about our workforce. But what is Kaiser doing out in the community? Well, Kaiser Preventative invests millions of dollars each year to support innovative programs to help prevent disease and promote health. So we're actively engaged in building more sustainable, healthy habits around because we believe that health extends beyond just the campus of Kaiser and the walls that I practice medicine in. It's actually, it's in our environment. We have to help create a healthy environment. And there's so many of you all in the environment. So we have to create the successful schools. We have to create the accessible fruits and vegetables in our stores. We have to create the parks and the safe playgrounds. And basically, we want to come alongside. And we've uh, been able to partner along with the museums, the parks, media, and also in the, and do outreaches in the school with teddy bear clinics and different types of uh, bringing different heroes for the kids to look up to. So, yeah. Okay, wow, oh, this is great. So at uh, Children's Discovery Museum, um, we had a chance to just really help them to kind of uh, adopt a healthier menu. We redid a lot of the wall art and the table uh, art to kind of promote fruits and veggies. And oh, I love this site, this is great. We, at the kickoff, I, I went there, I, we brought my daughter. And uh, basically, uh, my daughter is a really slow eater. And uh, she, uh, she's just one of the slowest dudes you'll ever meet. Like but when she heard there's a teddy bear clink where they actually hand out free teddy bears, I just never saw, I, I never saw her eat those eggplant, roasted eggplant bits so fast. And she dragged me up the stairs to Teddy Bear Clinic. And there, you know, it was just amazed to see how riveted all these little kids were in learning how to take care of your uh, teddy bear during a teddy bear checkup. They, you know, I, you know, I saw just so many hands go up, who knows any vegetables you can feed your teddy bear? Or should we give your teddy bear soda or water or juice? What should we give them? Or what if your teddy bear wants to watch a lot of TV? Should you let him do that? And the kids are all like, no! And it was so fun to see. But um, anyway, that was a uh, one-time thing in the teddy bear clinic there. But uh, the, uh, the Children's Discovery Museum has had a big facelift. Oh, the healthy trail child. This is great. I'm a big lover of nature, and um, uh, I write out nature prescriptions for my patients to prescribe nature to go out and play. And um, if you want to know the secret of having a healthy, happy, non-whining kid that fights less and eats more during dinner time, nature trails. That's the answer. Boy, when you get out there and we count how many wildflowers we can see in an hour, or we listen for 30 seconds to count how many sounds that we can find, you know, the kids are so happy out there. And with um, Kaiser's partner to just, you know, this Healthy Trails Challenge, so they actually earn reward for going out and walking on the nature trails. On um, the Full Circle Farms is another really fun thing, and I learned that when the kids plant it, they eat it. My little son, he likes to pick off the tomatoes when they're still green. And before I have a chance to tell him, don't, 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 I have to wash it first. <laughs> he, he eats them. <laughs> so, but the Full Circle Farms is an educational organic farm that engages the community and schools, and it's really neat. 
Um, oh, part of the otter is awesome. So first five Santa Clara County developed this um, part of the otter. And if you want to know how to keep a three-year-old in the exam room happy while he's waiting for the doctor, have a stack of these in the bookshelves. I've had so many kids ask me, Doctor, can I have one of those books? I say, yes, and you get a bracelet and a water bottle if you promise for the rest of the summer, no soda. They say, yes, we'll do it. And this really changed, it's so neat, it's, it's powerful. And over here, actually for the older kids, we have Martina and Dexter. These are some public service announcements that um, we've created to help parents know um, the benefits of water and how to calculate caloric intake and sodas and, and drinks and things like that. And on your little goodie bags, you'll see these little tags. They actually have the YouTube site, so you can see some of the messaging around Dexter and Martina. Um, oh yeah, Teddy Bear Clinics, you guys know all about it. Um, Walking Wednesdays, we get our doctors out in the community to just um, partner with getting the kids to walk to school more. And oh, get earthquakes kick. If you want to know one of the best ways to get a third and fourth grader to actually get hyped up about a health talk, you bring in a professional soccer player <laughs> that will give them an autograph. You know, I remember when I went to one of these, I, when I entered, the kids were just so excited. I mean, they were giddy, and they were lucky, they were cheering, and then basically they were, were clapping until they found out that I was only the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Except for one little girl. One little girl said, that's my doctor! And she came up and gave me the biggest hug. It was just wonderful. <laughs> So this is a five-week program where at the end, um, there's a professional soccer player from the Earthquakes that comes and gives them an autograph on a certificate, and the kids just really em start embracing regular physical activity as part of their regular days. Um, and the Educational Theater program is awesome. Yeah, the second way, best way to get kids in school hyped up is to tell them that kids, we actually get to skip school today to watch a show. And it's been wonderful. They, the theater comes in, they do a presentation. A week later, they come in and actually do a workshop. And the workshop uh, does a lot of small group work and the kids really get uh, the, the message on this. So, we talked a little bit about our, our commitment to our community. And as part of our mission, we also want to be a leader in leading this national conversation of how we can help our nation with this obesity epidemic. We are a proud partner with HBO to bring a dramatic new documentary series called Weight of the Nation to get the conversation started. So let's check out a preview now. I brought it for you. As we're waiting, um, uh, I'm just going to read you a little letter from one of the kids that wrote me a letter after the, um, the scene in the theater. My name is Josh Lee, and I'm a fourth grader at Palm Roy School. I learned something from this, that making healthy choices is important. This should be in all schools, because healthy choices make our bodies stronger, muscles, and hearts stronger. The program is so important that I made a promise, too. I promised to drink less soda than water, because soda has a lot of sugar in it. It can give me diabetes. Another promise I made is to exercise more so that my body can be stronger. And the last promise I made was to eat less meat, like hamburgers. Because sometimes hamburgers have um, uh, bad things like dead cow from your nails and toenails. <laughs> it's so neat that he already knows that diabetes can come on with all the soda he's drinking. And that little letter really hit home that, wow, these kids are getting it. I mean, they're actually making these promises and making changes in their lives. And it's cool, at Palmer, I, I, I used to go out to their school and do this marathon running club. One of the fourth graders actually has run two marathons worth of mileage. And every time they run a marathon, they get a special shirt, and it, it's so neat. And uh, how are we doing now? Well, you know, as we're waiting for that to queue up, um, feel free, since I can't see behind me, feel free to just let me know if, it, if, if it's up. Um, yeah, you know, after you watch this, and if you're not, if we can't watch it today, it's actually, um, it, it's a free resource that Kaiser has made uh, available. Um, and you can find it on the internet. Uh, all of our information is on the, uh, the little, uh, I guess, sheets that you guys have that has our websites. Um, but this Way to Nation is actually a, a free offering that we have over there. And um, 
you know, when, when you watch this video, we want you to realize that this is just the beginning of a much larger and hopefully an ongoing public health conversation that we want to have. We see this as mainly a catalyst to get the, the, the conversation going and the actions moving. And, you know, it's supported by the Institutes of, um, National Institute of Health and the Institute of Medicine, the CDC. So there's a lot of scientific peer-reviewed research that backs up what this video is all about. And we're hoping that we can really accelerate the progress on preventing obesity. Yeah, it was just released on HBO six days ago. Yeah, because yeah. I just saw it just weekend, something about the kids in the cafeteria. Yes, wonderful. Yes, yeah, it, it was released on HBO. So, yeah. And um, actually, one of the things that, that we've done here as well is that we actually brought some of these kits, these, uh, tool, these box kits that are um, the Weight of the Nation kits. And we have made 40,000 of these community action kits uh, to distribute all around the, the U.S. Um, in, in, in fight in, with this campaign. And so this toolkit includes like the four-part series and some accompanying books in English and Spanish that help to use this toolkit. And we have actually one for each agency or, or uh, group that's come here today. And that we've asked, we're going to ask that a representative from each of the agencies, um, if you are willing to be a Wait for the Nation ambassador, stop by the table, the Wait for the Nation table on your way out, and we'll have one of these for you, you know, when you give us our business card. So again, only one per agency since we have a limited amount and we want everyone to get one of these. How are we doing that video? <laughs> it was working earlier today. That's OK. No problem. Well, you know what I can do is um, i just tell you a little bit more about the different campaign components. Um, you know, this is the first set of things. It's a four-part series, and it has 15 supplemental films. Uh, that just are useful films to know and have about obesity. Things like the stigma of obesity, um, bullying, some of the psychosocial aspects of obesity, and you know, those are all very, very important aspects. And in the fall, we're releasing a, another three-part series of Weight of the Nation for kids as well. And uh, so these are some of the toolkits that we are making available. All right, look at that. Uh, <laughs> Ain't technology wonderful? It is. <laughs> yeah. So, well, in the case that we don't get to watch it here, we do have one for everyone. So you will be able to take one home um, on the way out. So because I see that I'm close to the end of my time and out of respect for the other teachers, uh, uh, other teachers and other speakers, um, at Kaiser, we are striving to provide an environment that supports our commitment to obesity prevention. And we know that many of you all in this room are in that same, um, same place with us. And we're so happy that we have so many great partners here. And I am looking forward to coming back next year and hearing more of the innovative ways that you all have come up with to uh, engage in this battle. I'm looking forward to celebrating new victories. I'm looking forward to actually making more congratulations and showing five more slides of local successes that we're having. Um, so I do ask you to join us in making the healthy choice the easy choice for everyone. Thank you very much.